well, there is going to be a big, huge update um, coming tomorrow as of, well, okay, well, not tomorrow, but uh, Thursday as of the uh, recording of the podcast. So it's going to be their big, huge uh, spring update where they're finally going to expand the uh, custom design slots because people have been begging for that. And also you can now access the, uh, the custom design shop so you don't have to go to the Able Sisters anymore. You can now also access it on your uh, smartphone, like in the game. And there's some other stuff, too. So, like, the the San, Sanrio collab is also coming out this weekend. Um, I guess, fortunately and unfortunately, like, the cards, it's um, it comes in six in a pack. So at least you get the whole set in a pack. However, it's Target exclusive. So... It's going to be that thing where people are going to buy a crap ton of those and like scalp them on eBay. So I'm not too happy with that sort of thing. Um, but it's essentially like exclusive, like Samuel items along with villagers you can have on the island, which is kind of cool. Uh, what else? Um, they're going to have the uh, first anniversary cake uh, because March 20th is going to mark the first anniversary of when the game first came out. So they're going to have like this uh, big anniversary cake that looks like an island, which is really cool for uh, April Fool's Day. Um, they're going to have like different colored like whoopee cushions. So I'm hoping like it does like the sound when you sit down on it. That's going to be really cool. And also that dreaded um, egg day is, is returning. However, um, they did hint that they're going to optimize it. So it wasn't like that whole like shit fest that was like the first time they did it. So um so along with that, like they're also going to have like new items specifically for that. So it's it's still like fresh for uh people who did it last year, but also there's still like new stuff for people who are just joining in, in the game and stuff. So so that's gonna be really exciting and cool. So <laughs> I think I'm probably one of few people within my group of friends that still played a game like kind of like around the time when like it was around like maybe like late summer or early fall is when people started to kind of like die off on the game that I've been consistently pretty much playing it you know like whenever there's like an event or like some cool things or like if I want to like try to get that specific like uh photo from a, from a villager because that's you get them when it's like max friendship like I do that, but otherwise, yeah, it's um, it's it's been fun. It's like, it's like that meme where it's like, uh, it's like you literally saved my life, and it's a game. It's like, I'm just a game. So that was pretty much my my pretty much I guess like my lifesaver for 2020. So <laughs> yeah, it's like they really expanded on the emotes this time around too, which is really great. So other than the standard emotes you get. Like they expanded to where like um, during the Halloween event, like you have like those emotes where like you can like creep up on somebody and spook them. They had um, for the uh, festival that was like earlier this year uh, around like Valentine's Day, like they had like emotes where you can dance, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. And another set of emotes, I think even before that, where it's like extra actions and people was people were like popping off about like the one emote where you can actually sit down. Everybody's like, "Yay, I can like sit down with my villagers." While other people, it's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sit down and block my villagers." Like what they used to do. Like they'll be like blocking like a like a path or like a bridge, and they're just sitting there. And you're like, "Dude, seriously?" But now you can sit down. It's like, "Haha, how the tables have turned." So, <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> yeah so this was a topic that i wanted to talk about uh earlier but we had the cwf interview thing so of course like this topic is probably like been long and gone but it's still pretty relevant in terms of how uh people they like they tend to like uh gatekeep you know like fandoms and other stuff so um 
going back into this uh, tweet that you mentioned before. So this this was like, yeah, it was about maybe like a month ago, like this tweet happened. And pretty much like anime Twitter like blew up on this. So there was a tweet. Um, I'm not going to mention the person behind the tweet because I don't want people to hear us talk about and like personally attack this person because I'm not all for that sort of thing and like cancel culture and stuff and all that. So please don't do that. So, um, so this tweet came up. It was pretty much to paraphrase it. It's like, oh, if you only watch these particular shows, you're not an anime fan. As in like, oh, if you only watch like like Dragon Ball Z or like pretty much like any like of the what's kind of like the mainstream kind of like anime, it's like, oh, you're not a real anime fan, you know, blah, blah, blah. So and like people were like going off on this, too, like. For I mean, like out of context, when I when I first saw that, I thought it was pretty much saying like, hey, you know, if you're just only watching these type of shows, you're kind of like kind of like limiting yourself to other types of anime you could be watching because like anime in itself, like covers a lot of genres. So it's not like, you know, like you watch a couple of shows and that's like what encapsulates what anime is. It's like. Oh, like if you like say, oh, if you watch this show, you may also like this show that's similar, you know, or like if you're following like a like a certain studio, because some people like that, like they'll follow like certain like anime studios because they like their work. It's like, oh, like, oh, you watch this show from this studio, you should check out this too, you know. So it's at least introducing people to other anime and broadening their horizons in a sense. But this person is pretty much the way he was approaching it was pretty much he was like bringing it upon himself to dictate like what makes an anime fan, you know, were. Yeah. Because like going back on that, it was kind of like how pretty much like how people thought about like the studio Dean adaptation of Fates D night, um, you know, like that adaptation as opposed to the affordable adaptation of Fates D night. So you have people who are pretty much, dick writing you football you know and it's like hey you guys like for this is my personal opinion on it it's like hey guys if it weren't for the studio dean adaptation most of y'all probably wouldn't have known even what the hell like fate stay night even was much less like tight moon or you can argue like the um Tsukihime anime but that but that anime is garbage but that's my opinion but I'm just saying so <laughs> that's a whole other topic for another day but anyway <laughs> but yeah but like uh going back to what I was talking about before but yeah but it's pretty much um this person who made the tweet like taking it upon himself to dictate what makes uh, a person an anime fan so it was like people were just like pretty much like jumping on his ass you know like as far you know like for him like gatekeeping the fandom and everything so when people were were trying to like debate with him back on this uh, up you know with this tweet he's like it's like oh just a general reminder uh it's like it, it's like it is acceptable for you to gatekeep your fandoms like some something that effect you know to paraphrase the tweet you know and people just went off dude it, it was it was crazy like like even like um uh, like uh what was it uh it was it was either it was either like Gigguk or it was uh the anime man like talking about it too it was like hey if you're gonna go off about gatekeeping uh fandoms it's like dude seriously like no you're not even a fan even at that if you're gonna like you know like go off the rails and try to like gatekeep like fandoms like that that is not cool so um but basically um i know i'm kind of going off on a tangent but this is a topic for me that i feel strongly for because uh to get to from my perspective i it's like there's like i experienced uh gatekeeping um on the uh video game community side of things um i it's been like pretty much like how uh for the video game community uh community excuse me like it's usually like kind of like perceived as like you know like the boys club you know so it's generally like um you know like as a girl who plays video games it's a little bit harder for me to get into those type of community sometimes where it's pretty much like it depends on the games too like um for i guess to give an example like 
for me, if I play like Dark Souls or if I play like Monster Hunter, pretty much everybody is pretty cool with each other and they welcome everybody. And like they're really noob friendly too. So like if you're like a new player, like um they welcome you with open arms, you know, because like hey, they've all been newbies before, you know, so they're so they're always gonna help, you know, they're always welcome to like uh helping out like uh new people as far as getting them into like uh demo connects of the game and like try to get the general feel of the game and everything for dark souls in particular is very interesting because it's pretty much like their multiplayer system is you don't really directly communicate with everybody it's like gestures or um they have items where uh you can use where it's like uh kind of like general phrases like hello or what or whatnot so it's effectively like you can either help people in the world like fight bosses or you can invade other people's worlds and pretty much gank, gank them so <laughs> while in monster hunter it's essentially like you know like you, you're in a guild like or you with your friends and you just go off and like uh find a monster it's all uh cooperative multiplayer which is really great um as opposed to like other uh communities like where uh say like if you're if, the, if it's people who play like fps's like call of duty or something it's like you're gonna get yelled at with all the racial slurs and everything else like under the sun you know and it and in most instances instances it doesn't even matter like if you're a, a girl or if you're a guy or whatever they'll just yell at you but but sometimes too like even if you are a girl like for some games it's like you know it's as soon as they find out you're a girl they put you on a pedestal and I've experienced this on Ragnarok Online. So as soon as people figured out I was an actual girl, like you just have people just like um, try to like get your attention because you're a girl. So I've actually had like players like approach me and try to give me like items where they're like, they're pretty much like really rare drops just, just so they can get my attention. And some people, it's like, it depends where you're coming from. You can either be that person, just be like, kind of pushing them away. It's like, hey, you're, you're being really freaking creepy. Or you can be like me at the time and take advantage of it, <laughs> which I shouldn't have. But it's like, hey, you you want to give me like all this extra zenny in these items? Shit, dog. Okay. You know, and I took advantage of it, you know, but I but like, I do not condone that type of behavior. But anyway. <laughs> You know, because it's pretty much you know, leading on these people, but um, but okay. But I was like, yeah, like um, there was one instance that I encountered it, uh, actually in person. So it's not like in game, you know, with other strangers. This is like what happened to me in person. So um, there was one um uh, arcade that used that used to be business, but they're not anymore. This was like years ago, and um, uh, it was one of few arcades that were running uh like in like in the bay area pretty much because our arcades even here are are few far between this is like before the era of when round one decided to hit up all the malls and decided to kind of like place themselves in each mall but um this is like pretty much a little like small like community arcade but it's very uh fighting game uh community centric so a lot of the games are in this arcade or like fighting games so it's like these uh, custom arcade cabinets where you can hook up like a game console in and you can play the game as if you're playing it in an actual arcade. So that was like pretty much their gimmick. They do have actual arcade games, but like I said, it's primarily like fighting games. So they would have like these fighting game events going on, like for like new like local tournaments and whatnot, you know. Um, so depending on which uh, event happened, like, you have it where it's pretty much like um, like the general one where it's like everybody's welcome and, and all that, you know, um, where it's not like a real like specific game tournament they're under. It's like uh, little like little tournaments. So it's a little bit more friendlier that way because it's all different types of games. But there was one uh, tournament that I was a spectator in. Uh, that was more focused on the like the anime fighting games. Where I where I was not really welcomed at all, really. It's it's kind of like yeah, it was kind of like one of those uh, little pockets of the community where it's like 
they pretty much want to keep it as their own little boys club. So like whenever like a girl wanders in, it's like you kind of get stares and are pretty much like dirty look kind of stares. Um, but it's just me. It's like I just want to watch people play because that's what I like. It's like I'm not there as a competitor because I suck. Um, I'm there just pretty much to spectate and watch people play because that's how I get hyped for fighting games. It's like, you know, like watching other people play and just see their skill and everything. And it's really great. But I don't know. It was just like this tournament where it's kind of like I was not really welcomed at all about it. And like I did mention this to the owner at one point and it was kind of like, um, Unfortunately, he kind of like gave me the runaround about it too. But at the time, it was like he was really busy trying to keep everything running along with the uh, the event organizers and stuff too. So I can't really fault him for that, really. But as far as just like uh, that that particular group or groups, um, not really want to point him out or anything. But it was just like, yeah, that was like really really uncomfortable, you know, because. It's not so much like verbally, like they tell you, like, you know, leave. It's like you can just feel it, like, just in the room that they don't want you there. And that was just really uncomfortable and awkward for me. So, um, but otherwise, like, uh, now, now I'm starting, now I'm starting to lose steam, but <laughs> yeah, but also like wanting to kind of like cover like how. Even, like, with both, like, the anime communities and the video game communities, like, the biggest gatekeeping that I tend to notice is they tend to gatekeep people who don't know specifics of a game or a series or, like, you know, like, random trivia or whatever, you know, where it's, like, you can, it's like you can just be a person who just casually, like, watches a show or casually play a game, but... They would gatekeep people. It's like, oh, you don't know about this character and like, like you know, like their stats and their blood type and blah blah blah. Or you don't know this part of like this uh, anime, like with this scene and blah blah blah. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, you're not a real fan. It's like you don't know your. It's like you. It's like you don't know your show or your game. And it's like really, it's like half the time people are not are really going to pay attention to that sort of thing. They're just gonna watch the show play the game and that's it they're just gonna enjoy it for what it is you know so for for me like for you to like gatekeep like people's knowledge of something you know to that degree is weird to me it's it's kind of like people's like obsession where it's like um i guess to put in i guess in comparison so like you know like the comic book guy in the simpsons right where it's like yeah, like, like like that kind of like hardcore kind of like fan where it's like you would know like which comic certain things are to the page and to the letter. And if you don't and you don't have that kind of like scope of knowledge of something, more often than not, like you get gatekeep, gatekeep uh excuse me, uh they gatekeep you for that. Um and it's like yeah, and it's like it's like really why you know it's like I'm not gonna know like every facet of every scene of every character to the letter what's going to happen. I'm it's like I it's like I enjoyed this scene as much as you enjoyed the scene. I just so happen to just be more casual about it, you know, because that's just how I am. So <laughs> so why like go on me like if I don't know a specific theme you know from a show or from a game or from a comic book or whatever you know yeah it's like that's something i could never understand <laughs> and i kind of want to run back to like um like we're going back you know like with the nessa argument so that's that's the that's the other thing too like i see like even in the cosplay community like you have people of color like cosplay these characters and people tripping on them. It's like, well, you're not Asian or you don't have light skin. You shouldn't be cosplaying this character. And it's like, people, please. I mean, like they're in for the cosplay because they is, they love the cosplay. It's like, they love the community. They love the characters and they're all in for it. So for you to pretty much like try to cancel them because 
they just so happen like to not look like the character as far as the color of their skin that's like really you're gonna call yourself out being a racist really <laughs> call yourself out the bigot really and it's like it's for me i kind of want to bring up like as far as with that is um there was a show like a like some time ago that was on the sci-fi channel called heroes of cosplay yeah, but I kind of want to say something about this um, as kind of like part of our current discussion and like my personal view on it. People need to understand that with reality shows, they edit the shit out of everything to fit a narrative. That's just how it is. So like there was like one scene, I think it was like with Riddle and some other cosplayers where um, I think it is Riddle, um, but I might be recalling the scene. Uh, I may not be recalling the scene. Uh, correctly so but it's pretty much her like saying to the effect of this like yeah you can cosplay as certain characters you know if you're a different body type um so an example i think she brought up was like yeah you can cosplay as superman you know if you're a little bit more hef uh, heftier person just be aware that people are going to go on you saying that hey you're you know you're not fit you're not muscular and you're like obese like why the hell are you cosplaying as superman right but the way the scene was edited um made it feel like she's kind of like picking on those types of people so out of context like uh people took it out of context and were pretty much wanting to cancel riddle over that and she's like no that's not the context of it you know it's um her also like kind of like making that point where it's like you know reality shows they edit shit and everything because the other thing too was like because Yaya Han was also uh part of the uh cast for the show and because of just all like the ridicule that she got from the show because I want to say she was a co-producer of it as well it got to the point where it always made her quit because of just the shit that she got from people you know um and i remember like people talking about the show too like um while i was airing after it was airing like just like different cosplayers like you either get like people who understands like hey it's a reality show you know they're gonna try to fit it to your narrative so it's one of those things you're gonna have to take with a grain of salt you know but there's other people who have gone through that you know like people who try to like you know like um you know like pretty much bring them down because like they're they're cosplaying a character that they really like but people want to bring them down because they don't look a certain way you know or like their the quality of their cosplay is really poor you know it's not like you know like that top quality it's like they're using like cheaper materials because that's what they can afford you know it's getting better materials is out of their budget so for them to watch that kind of show that's going to hit them in a little different you know so i've heard like cosplayers just like talking shit about yaga talking shit about riddle you know not really understanding like what rally shows are you know like they're gonna try to fit a narrative you know um because i personally feel that 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 show was specifically made for normies it felt like a very a very normie show like for people it's like oh, what's this cosplay sort of thing? Well, we'll show you. And we're going to have like, these well-known cosplayers and some lesser-known ones to kind of give you a perspective of what the cosplayers are. And it just so happened to have Yaya and Riddle in it, you know, and these smaller cosplayers who are trying to make it big, you know, but they but because of the standard that, you know, like Yaya and Riddle and like Jessica Nagiri and like those people like, put up it's like they put this the that bar so high like they feel like trying to get to that level is always a struggle it's like you're, you're trying to like paddle upstream you know but it's just you know it's like it's just one of those things that's just out of their reach you know but but yeah but it's just kind of like yeah going back with the cosplay thing you know where you know, it's people, they're just in it, you know, like, just, you know, for the character and for the cosplay and for the community, but people just want to, like, you know, like, trying to shut them down because it's like, it's like, it's like, oh, it's like, this person's Asian, but you're a Black person, why are you cosplaying this character? Or, like, oh, it's like, this person's supposed to be, like, this particular body type, you're not this, 
uh, type of body type. You know, it's like, why are you cosplaying this character? And it's just like, people, please, like, just no. 